the Idris Shah Foundation podcast. Practical psychology for today. Featuring the works of Idris Shah, narrated by David Alt. Welcome to the Idris Shah Foundation podcast. On this edition of the podcast, we will hear selections from The World of Nasruddin by Idris Shah. Dangerous Glasses Nasruddin's neighbour started to wear glasses. What are they for? asked the mullah. They magnify, replied the man. Then be careful when you are eating, or your food might grow in size and choke you, warned Nasruddin. Dangers of Rain When Nasruddin's first wife died, he remarried. One day, the weather was so bad that he sheltered in the tea house. Just look at the rain, exclaimed the proprietor. I wouldn't be surprised if it washes away the very surface of the ground and all that is below floats up to the top. I hope not, replied the mullah, for then my last wife would bob up from her grave and chase away her replacement. Dangers of Sleep One day, the court astrologer told the king that he had appeared in his dreams. The Shah immediately had the man tortured until he was prepared to describe the guise his master had taken in the dream. Hearing the screams of agony, Nasruddin begged permission to leave the palace. What causes this impromptu decision to depart? asked the monarch. A knowledge that I do not have control over my subconscious while asleep replied the mullah. Dead Chicken Nasruddin sold a chicken at the bazaar. The next day, the buyer rushed up to his stall. You trickster! You sold me a diseased chicken! This morning it died! How extraordinary, replied the mullah. It never did that when it was mine. Dead or alive? Nasruddin met a well known con man on the street. They told me you were dead and buried, the mullah exclaimed. As you can see, I am alive and quite well, he replied. Don't think I'll fall for that trick, said Nasruddin. If you say you are alive, you must be dead, for we all know what a liar you are. Deceitful Donkey Nasruddin was riding home from the bazaar daydreaming of the pilau he would have for his supper. With his thoughts full of the saffron rice, juicy meat and fried onions, he did not pay much attention to the route his donkey was taking home. His daydream was finally broken when the donkey lurched to a halt outside a house. Come, I have all the ingredients for your best pilau, Nasruddin called to his wife. But the woman he saw before him when he eventually looked up was a complete stranger. Realising that it was not only the wrong wife, but the wrong house and even the wrong village, the mullah looked at his donkey severely. If you had told me that you wished to move here, I would perhaps have considered it, but I will not stand for deceit. Descendants For a while, Nasruddin was banished from the king's court for his constant jibes. Returning to his own village, he started to plant a forest of saplings around his property. How you have fallen from royal favour, chuckled the imam in glee. Your beard will be snow white before those saplings are a few feet high, and you will certainly never see the trees in their splendour. Show me a man who does not consider his descendants, replied Nasruddin, and I will show you one who is nothing. Devious Chickens 
Nasruddin bought some grain at the market and started to dig a pit in which to store it. He dug all day, but the pit seemed to resist going downwards and instead went sideways. Quick, he cried to his astounded wife, come and see, I have found some devious chickens under the ground. They have been hiding so that they can steal my grain. Different Huts Nasruddin was once employed as a cook. One day his master sent him to the bazaar to buy ingredients for a grand feast to be offered to important guests that night. Later, when the food was presented, the noble diners were disgusted to find that each dish was made of sheep's heart. I told you to prepare a banquet of the utmost delicacies, the sweetest and most pleasant foodstuffs for these honourable guests. Master, replied Nasruddin, what could be sweeter or more pleasant than heart? For it is the organ which holds love, compassion, generosity and mercy. Waving this explanation aside, his employer ordered him to return to the kitchen. Come back with something decadent and indulgent rather than pure, he shouted. One hour passed, then two, and the guests began to fidget with hunger. Eventually the cook reappeared with the replacement food. But to their horror, the plates were once again piled high with sheep's heart. The host and his offended guests demanded an explanation. Master, said the cook, this time you asked me to bring indulgent and decadent dishes of a less pure nature. What could be more indulgent than a heart which seeks to serve only itself, or more decadent than a heart seeking only pleasure? Different Owners, Different Birds Nasruddin was shopping in the bazaar when he saw a peacock being sold for twenty pieces of gold. Rushing home, he grabbed his goose and hastily returned to the bazaar. Here he set up a stall next to the wealthy merchant in charge of the peacock. To his amazement, not a single man offered him twenty pieces of gold for his bird, while an interested throng gathered around the trader next to him, bidding vast sums for the ornate bird. How is it that you are practically mobbed by customers in their haste to purchase that bird when my plump goose is left on the shelf? Simple, replied the merchant, puffing himself up with importance. This is a peacock, a bird with ravishing plumage, which preens and struts all day with head held high. It is as noble as the king. But my goose is just like you, replied Nasruddin. It waddles like you, it hisses like you, and it is as filthy as you. Surely you would consider yourself worth twenty pieces of gold? Different Paths You are a great mystic, said one of Nasruddin's pupils. Surely you will know why men take different paths through life instead of all following one true path. Simple, replied his teacher. If everyone followed the same path, we would all end up in the same place, the balance of the world would be tipped, and we would all be thrown into the ocean. Dissolving Sins Nasruddin decided to make his living by absolving the sins of others. He found an old bottle which he half filled with water. Next he set up a stall in the bazaar. Soon he had a crowd of people clamouring to be cleansed. Each paid a gold piece and blew into the bottle and was told that their wrongdoings were forgotten. The conqueror Tamerlane happened to be passing and, noticing the throng around Nasruddin's stall, he stopped for a closer look. How many sins can your bottle hold at a time? he inquired. Only one, and then I have to shake it up to dissolve the sin in the holy water. 
Tamerlane handed over a piece of gold, blew into the vessel, and then held out another coin. Time after time he blew, and time after time Nasruddin accepted the money and dissolved the sin in the water. After several hours the conqueror paused. I am quite out of breath. Come to my house tomorrow and we'll continue. And thus Nasruddin was ensured a steady income for a considerable time, for Tamerlane had many friends in need of the same service. Diving for food Nasruddin was invited to eat at the house of a man renowned for his miserly ways. When the meal was served, the mullah found that his bowl contained nothing more than a thin soup. Without a word, he started to undress. Nasruddin, what are you doing? asked the surprised miser. I am preparing to dive into the soup and see if I cannot find a piece of meat hiding at the bottom. Do angels chase thieves? The imam found Nasruddin sitting in the kitchen with his dog. You cursed infidel, he cried. Have you forgotten that the patriarch Noah divided animals into two categories, the clean and unclean? And into which category does my guard dog fall? Into the category of unclean, of course. Drive the filthy cur out of your house or suffer the wrath of God, who will send his angels to your valueless dwelling. And will God's angels chase away thieves and mind my goats? Lunatic, replied the imam. Why should the holy angels concern themselves with your trifling needs? Then, at the risk of angering God, I am afraid that I must keep my dog. Dog or Ox One day, the emir decided to poke fun at Nasruddin. How do you feel, Mullah? he asked with a smile. As fit as an ox, replied the sage. Really? As fit as an ox, eh? Don't you mean a dog? Yes, Nasruddin replied. Now you come to mention it, a dog is a better description. How quickly you change your tune, Mullah. Majesty, when you first asked, I did feel as fit as an ox, but after a few moments of your conversation, I remembered that since your highness has graced this country with his rule, my life has been similar to that of a dog. Doing things in reverse One of Nasruddin's witticisms had annoyed the king to such an extent that he told the executioner to give the mullah a hundred lashes. On hearing the sentence, Nasruddin removed his shirt and loudly called the court masseuse. It is customary to massage the back after rather than before the whip has done its work, said the masseuse. True, replied Nasruddin, but after I have suffered the whip, I will be in no fit state to appreciate the massage. Donkey Astrologer Nasruddin was tired of being the court astrologer. The stress of knowing that any inaccurate prediction might lose him his head persuaded him to look for a successor. One day, he led his donkey up to the monstrous, jewel-encrusted throne. Your Majesty, I am unable to continue to read the constellations, as I have found an astrologer far more qualified than I. With this, he pointed to the donkey. How is a filthy donkey more qualified to predict than you? demanded the king. He possesses two fundamental qualities which I do not, replied Nasruddin. He is ridiculous enough to listen to endless stupid questions, and a voice absurd enough with which to answer. Donkey Burial 
After many years of dedicated service, Nasruddin's donkey died. The mullah was so upset by the animal's demise that he vowed to give it a decent burial. He wrapped the body in a shroud and late that night stole into the graveyard and buried it. The villagers got to hear of this and dragged Nasruddin to court. Your honour, said the mullah, rather than offend I have simply carried out the indirect will of God. Before my donkey died she spoke to me in the language of humans. How could she have the gift of speech if not granted by God? And what did the donkey say when she spoke? asked the judge. She asked me to bury her in the cemetery and pay the court twenty gold pieces. The charges were dropped. Donkey King As the debt collectors carted away the last of his possessions, Nasruddin got in his donkey and went to see the king. After several days' ride, he arrived at the palace gates, travel-worn and hungry. What is your business here? demanded the palace guards. I am a ruler. Bowing deeply, the guards rushed off to inform the king. Your Highness, a ruler has arrived. Bring him to me at once, said the monarch. When Nasruddin was shown into the gleaming throne room, the king was taken aback by his ragged appearance. You are a ruler? Yes, I am. As ruler of this great kingdom, I rule over the land as far as the eye can see. Excuse me for asking such an indelicate question, but what exactly are you ruler of? Well, replied the mullah, I was once ruler of the kingdom of the apple orchard. Then I was ruler of the melon patch. More recently, I was ruler of my home. But now that my enemies have made off with most of my wealth and land, times are hard. These days I am simply ruler of my donkey. The king smiled. You are the ruler of your donkey, I the ruler of this entire land. We rulers must stick together. Donkey Loads one day, the king and the crown prince instructed their coachman to drive them through the royal parkland. Nasruddin was told to accompany them on foot. As the coach sped through the gardens, Nasruddin jogged and panted alongside. After an hour, the horseman slowed and the mullah assumed that he was to be given a lift. Instead, the crown prince extended one arm and dropped two weighty robes on his head. Carry these, he snapped, and gave the signal to move on. Another hour passed, and Nasruddin, almost collapsing from exhaustion, still ran alongside. Finally, the coach stopped again. This time the king put his head out of the window. You must be tired, Muller, he said. Our robes are so wonderfully stitched with gold and rhinestones that you are carrying a donkey load. Actually, puffed the mullah, I am carrying the load of two donkeys. Donkey versus Steed Nasruddin was employed by a local governor, an old man who had recently taken a young and beautiful wife. One day the governor sent for Nasruddin. This morning my wife went to visit her parents in the next town. It is now getting late, so I want you to go and fetch her. Nasruddin set off, but did not return with his employer's bride for several hours. What a fool I was to send a slow coach on a puny donkey to collect my wife, said the governor. Next time I will dispatch a rider on a racehorse. Some days later his wife went to visit her father and mother once again, and remembering Nasruddin's tardiness, the governor dispatched his swiftest horseman to collect his wife. 
One day passed, then two, then three, and finally a week later the rider and the governor's wife returned. I owe you an apology, Nasruddin, conceded the governor. Your slow donkey proved to be far faster than my stable's fastest steed. It is not what you send, but who you send, replied the mullah. Do something for yourself. Nasruddin and his employer, a jeweller, were journeying to Iraq to buy some precious stones. One night, the two men settled down to sleep under the stars. Hardly had Nasruddin had time to close his eyes when the jeweller called out, Hurry, man, stoke up the fire. I feel it is beginning to die down. Impossible, replied Nasruddin. I put a large piece of wood on it moments ago. A little later, the merchant called out again, Quick, put out the fire. It will attract thieves who will steal all my valuables. Impossible, replied Nasruddin. The fire burned out several minutes ago. A minute passed, and the jeweller bellowed, Nasruddin, I am being bitten by mosquitoes. Light the fire again. Listen, master, snapped Nasruddin. I have done as you said twice tonight. Surely it is time you lifted a finger yourself. This audio is made available by the Idris Shah Foundation and is copyright 2019. All rights reserved.